Okay, so let's take a close look at the 300N. I'll take the uh, camera off. We've got a quick release plate on the top here. And there's only really a couple of controls here that uh, we need to look at. The, the first is, and I suppose really one of the most important, is this little guy here, this little locking nut here. If I take it off here, we can see that the head itself is indexed. Everything from 4 short, 6, 8, 10, I think it goes all the way up to uh, 72. And the reason why that is like that is because that determines the number of shots you're going to take. Uh, to capture the area that you want to get. And that's dependent, the number of shots you need to take is dependent on the field of view of your lens. And there's many places you can get information on um, the field of view of your lens, therefore how many shots you need. But the rule of thumb is allow about a 20 to 30% uh, overlap between frames. So as long as you've got that 20 to 30% overlap, you'll be fine. So what we do is, depending on what lens we're going to use, of course, we simply lock that into place. I'll put this on the 6 position, but it can be whatever it might be, up to 72 as I said. Uh, we do have a, around here, if I move this around, we've got a lock control. So if you're going to take a shot where you, you definitely don't want any movement in the top of the unit, we can just uh, tension that up and lock it into place. Normally that's undone, and when that's undone, it allows the unit just to turn and it's uh, indexed. It's like a little um, uh, something on the underside there which just slots into place at each one of these little points and you can feel it locking into place. Obviously uh, I can feel it here and that allows us to move this unit precisely where we need to be uh, to get that correct position. The only other thing we need to look at here is this little locking uh, nut here in the top and what that allows us to do is if we had the camera positioned, in fact, I'll, I'll put the camera back on, and then you'll probably get a better view of this. Say I'm in my first position here, but I really didn't have the camera quite positioned correctly. Well, I could move the tripod around, but I, I've got everything ready. So what I can do is just undo that little nut there, and then it allows me to move the camera into my first position, and then lock it down, and I'm ready to take all my sequence of shots. So that's a nice little feature that I particularly like, because I don't like having to move the tripod around all the time, and that's just a good way to, to get the, the camera into the right position. So this works extremely well, and for general panoramic uh, photography, where you're taking shots of objects that are pretty far away, it works fine. Where you will have difficulty, though, with, with using a unit like this, is if you're going to take shots where you have objects that are fairly close to the, to the lens, if you're going to do interiors or fairly close up to buildings, you'll find you'll, you'll have a problem. And the reason why you have a problem is because of a thing called the nodal point. And there's lots of information on the internet all about nodal points or um, lens entry pupils. But it's specifically to do with the fact that when you take a shot for panoramic photography, specifically for spherical, if there's objects fairly close, you have to position the camera so that the point of rotation isn't on the camera body, it's on a, a point on the lens. And so it means physically moving the camera back. So while this unit is great for, for landscapes and, and long distance shots, we need a different piece of equipment for uh, close-ups. And that's where the, uh, this unit, the 303 Plus, comes in. Because this allows us to precision align the camera forwards and backwards, left and right, so we get the camera positioned correctly for those shots.